Uh, good morning, lovely people. Hang on a second. I'm just checking the. I'm just checking the uh, microphone. Hi. Uh, let's see. Okay. One, two, three. That's it. Is that working? Just about. Oops. Okay. So yes. How are we doing? Oh, hang on. Like. One, two, three. That's it. Okay. It seems to be working. Okay, so so back on the screen. Hi. So what have we got here? Oh yes, um, uh, Diane. Yes. Good morning, uh, Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga with your um, Yoga Solutions Live. Um, can you look? This is a question from Diane. Uh, hi. Can you look at hips? Maybe hip openers. I've been told by a couple of people walking a lot causes tight hips. So. Um, is it not just the way I walk or hold tension? Yes. Yes, very good. Um, that's totally true. Uh, I've already written something in answer there, Diane, but let's have a look at this. Because I think this is a good subject. Hip openers. Um, uh, uh, when, when um, yes, okay, let's get centered. Yes, when, um, people are talking about hip openers they're generally talking about um, doing something to the muscles that seem to be in the way of moving your hips uh, um, let's see see if I can show you what I mean so uh, people this is this is nothing you know I'm not there's no criticism it's just a fact you know um, most people will use tension in the hip flexors and the core, the diaphragm, to bring a leg off the, a sort of a sleepy leg off the ground. Okay, so that's a, that's a normal way of picking up a leg. And then that tension feels like restriction to the hip. So then they uh, pull on that. Oh my God, this is awful. And they pull on that to try and stretch the errant muscles. Okay. Um, it's quite normal. But that's not really um, what needs to happen. Uh, you, you, know, you try and stretch those muscles and then you try and straighten the leg and you feel the restriction of the hamstring. So you try and stretch those muscles. And the, the stretching uh, feels like what you need to do to become uh, free in the hip. Hi, Kerry. Just talking about... Um, a misunderstanding around hip openers at the moment. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, yes. So, we tend to move in a way that sort of engages with the muscles that we want to change because they feel tight. But uh, they feel tight because we're, they're given the job of supporting us and moving us. So, we pick up a, a leg with a hip flexor and then uh, try and stretch the hip flexor. We, we straighten the leg by pulling on the hamstrings. And then we try and stretch the hamstrings, and and uh, we're sort of fighting ourselves because we're, we're we're trying to stretch the very things that are doing the movement of the support. Okay, so uh, I, I want to give you a a different way of looking thing, looking at things. Um, the the things that we talk about as hip openers, like uh, like for example, um, this sort of thing. These things that we talk of as hip openers are actually just movements that we can engage with if our hips are open. Uh, the stuff that we find that is in the way of movement um, shouldn't need stretching. <laughs> if, if, if there's stuff in the way of movement, then it's because um, that stuff needs to let go. And, and uh, if you want to find freedom in your hips. So the, the, inherently, we have to find different ways of um, articulating. Okay. And that's uh, of interest. And, and I'll see if I can make it clear. Um, the, the hip flexors involve the uh, psoas muscle, which is deep back into the uh, lumbar spine. And... If you want to um, have freedom in your hips, then basically you need to not overly employ, like that, the, the hip flexors. 
in order to not do that, we need what I, uh, I just refer to it as space. You could think of Udayana Banda, you could think of using a diaphragm, whatever it means, whatever it means to you. What we want to do is to take the responsibility of movement out of, out of the hip flexors. So in order to find that, um, we make space. So try, try this with, well, maybe watch for a moment just to see what it looks like. Um, try leaving the legs behind, but kind of work internally to draw the space out of the, to, to draw the weight out of the pelvis, out of the legs. And then, and you can use your arms for this, your wings. It's a natural function of, um, you know, flying, if you like. Um, and it doesn't look like you're doing much, but w what's happening is you're, you're taking the sort of, uh, uh, the weight that you, you're taking the, the responsibility of movement away from the local muscles of the hip and bringing it into the whole body, you see. And then um, the thing that decides to move the leg is the foot. So it's the foot that decides to go somewhere. And instead of picking the leg up, what you do is you put the weight down. Okay. Now, all of those conditions, this sort of spaciousness in here, which is away from the leg, um, so it's a core action, it's a fluid body action, it's your diaphragmatic action, uh, and looking for upward movement sourced in the touch of the earth means that I don't have to carry the weight here. So the, the hip is free to articulate and its, and its movement is sourced in the way the foot moves. So there's no need to stretch anything. So the result is an open hip. So Diane, you're right. It's all, it's it's about function. It's not a no. It's about the way you, the way you use things. So hip hip openers are a way of exploring how to find that. You know, you need to create the conditions uh, that take the complication of hip move move articulating the hip away. Now, if I was to um, try and cross my legs using the muscles of the hips, it's the hips that have to move. So if, I, if I'm pulling the hips in internal or external rotation with the, with the muscles around the joint of the hip, then obviously I'm going to be stiff in my movement. Okay. If, on the other hand, we can look at the hip joint as a, sort of relationship between what we do with our feet and, you know, uh, how everything above the hips can engage with creating the space for movement. And that's your Uddiyana Banda or the, the using of the wings to help the space um, fly up, upwardly fly. That's what Uddiyana Banda means. Um, then the, the natural function of using the feet and the natural function of using the earth become the way I motivate. So the natural function of using the feet in expression and the natural function of using the earth become how I articulate the hips. So um, the natural function of using the breath, the ground and the hands and feet means that I can articulate from the hips. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create relationships that leave us with freedom, with freedom in our movement, as opposed to trying to do anything to the muscles that seem to be in the way of movement. Okay. Well, there you go, um, Feeney. Uh, uh, what's the best way to encourage the cells to release? Yes, because uh, you won't be able to do any of those things if um, uh, your habit is to uh, hold yourself, uh, if your habit is to regulate your lumbar curve with your size muscle, which is actually one of the descriptions of its purpose. Um, oh, I, don't, I, I seem to be getting a little bit into the anatomy discussion at the moment. But um, I don't want to say that that's um, incorrect. It, it, it's not. It's, it's true. People use their sales muscles to fix the um, lumbar spine. Um, but if you want freedom of movement, 
then you can't be doing that as you try and uh, move a leg because then you're fixing your lumbar spine and your leg together with the psoas muscle. So um, how to, well, I think the first thing is how to experience freedom in the psoas muscle. Um, so the way to uh, experience freedom in, in any muscle is to take away its need to do its job, to take away its need to hold tension for whatever reason. And um, one of the things that the psoas muscle tends to do when you pull on yourself is it tends to try and hold the thigh bone and the lumbar spine together in some fashion whether it's by tucking under the tail um, to pull on the front of the hips or by um, fixing and arching at the back to uh, pull the legs back into the spine. Either way, we need to sort of um, remove the need to do either of those things so that you can let, let it go. So it's to do with the legs and the body. So if you can take hold of your legs um, externally with your hands and support them as if they are a separate entity, and it's useful to think of the thigh bone, where the thigh bones travel. It's way back here, um, way back to where the hip, where the um, protruding bit is, the greater trochanter. And if you think of it angling in and down, inwards a bit, then um, back into the earth and you've got, got an idea of where the hips are. So if you take hold of your thigh bones and you're sort of regulating your legs from your hands, so you can support inwards towards the um, uh, touch of the knees together and to touch of the ball of the foot, or you can support outwards towards the sort of outer edge of the feet. Either way, you want to let the legs go and take over with the push of the arms and the hands. Now, if you're used to tucking under to hold ten to hold your legs and pelvis together, which is often taught in many things, you know, that's that's, that's thought of as core support. It, it is to a fashion. It's holding your sales bottom tents. But um, if you're used to that, then when you push on your legs, you'll probably try and push upwards and then hold your pelt. You know, take your spine with it. So you're not really creating any space between your thigh bones on you, and you won't have the experience of releasing the hip flexors. Um, so the thing to do is to try and let go. So, you, And if you let go as you press the thighs away from you, and it's not up, it's kind of down. It's down towards the feet. Then you have to allow this space to come up away from it, which is the thing we were trying to engage with with our arms up here to to use the wings to bring the space away from, away from the legs. Okay. So this way is the same thing. You, you're using the arms to persuade the thigh bones away from the body, away from the pelvis, towards the feet, not towards the knees, but towards the feet. And you allow the spine to uh, lift if it, if it needs to. If you're a tucker under, you need to let the spine lift. Um, and lengthen out of the legs, okay? Now, it's quite a strong feeling, and it requires a decision um, to let go of any restriction around the base of the spine, around the base of the spine and the hips. So you have to let go in the pelvic floor, you have to let go of the tail, you have to let go of um, the sacrum, and you have to allow yourself to breathe what you're doing. And the, the, the action of pushing uh, especially if you're pushing in a way that creates a distance between the thigh bones and the and the body, uh, will make the chest lift a little, but the diaphragm will come up with it. So the feeling of the breath will be across here, across the heart and um, shoulders. And there's a breath called Sikhari that uh, I invite people to play with. It sort of describes that. So you kind of make the sound seat as you breathe in across the heart, as you support this space between your legs and you. And then as you release the breath, um, it's a satisfied sort of, so that the, so that the ribs kind of um, get involved with the release of the breath a bit more than the 
um, pushing down on the chest mostly, gathering in the ribs. That happens instead. Seat car. So that, that feeling allows you to sort of um, breathe what you're doing. So you can sort of create an even more distance between your thigh bones and essentially your diaphragm. That you're, you let your pelvis and the space inside here, uh, inside the belly, travel up with you. Now as an experiment, what you could do, once you've really felt that space and uh, able to let the breath go, um, and allow tension to release in the hips. You could try using your feet. Now, probably if you're a tucker under, the first thing that happens is you'll push the thighs up into the hand, against the hands. But if you can work out how to press down to the feet, which involves a little more um, sort of precision of direction, vertically down through the feet, and all that happens is the weight transfers from the base to the feet at one end and from the base to the head and shoulders at the other end. So you're left with this spaciousness between you and the rest of you and if it's if it's still extended like i'm like i am um then you need to be make, making sure that the there's an upward movement in here you can help that with the hands so there's a the seat curry feeling so it's, it's sort of releasing the weight of the legs away from you over there so you're not pushing up you're not pushing up releasing the weight of the legs away from you over there, and then drawing the space away from the legs inside. And it's the drawing of the space away from the legs that helps the, helps the uh, base of the spine release towards the knees. So you're not pushing against your hips. So this two-directional feeling of resting the thighs away from you and over the feet, so the feet have to be active, and then this core engagement in the other direction which you can find from your ribs and your wings see it car to draw the weight out of the legs and the result is you're in the sort of classic bridge pose without any push against the hips so instead you have freedom in the hips okay so Um, yes, Feeney. Uh, if, if you're having internet problems, um, um, that's not uh, that's more likely to be at your end. I don't, I don't know if anyone else is here getting that problem, but I, I don't. It's unlikely to be um, here if other people are hearing me fine. So, don't need to tell me about it too much. But anyway, so uh, so it, was that useful for anyone? I mean, we got a bit of time. How did that happen? I must have stormed through it. <laughs> Is that useful? Any comments, anyone? Or is there anything else you would like to look at? Well, actually, we can try out something else if you like. Do you want to try out? Um, we could try out taking weight through the legs. And, uh, excuse me, cat. Excuse me. Try taking a bit of weight through the legs and see see if we can find the same thing. Because th this is why why hips are. Um, oh, I'm glad to hear it, Kerry. This is why hips get tense in function. It's because we stand up, and what happens when we stand up? We take the weight of this stuff and hang it off our diaphragm, which involves the psoas muscle pulling up to pull the pelvis forwards, or pulling up to pull the pelvis back, or just pulling up. Uh, to, to carry the weight. So if we can um, engage with our wings a little to create a spaciousness away from our legs, and if you can, uh, this, is, this is the course content, you, you lot are getting it for free. Um, back ribs more into the floor, yeah, that, that happens sometimes, yeah, good. So, um, so if you want to try and standing, you know, the reason for, we get tense where in our hips when we are standing and walking is because uh, we put the weight back into the hips obviously so if we can take the weight out of the pelvis out of the hips out of the legs and leave the legs behind then uh, and the wings can help that the breath can help that and again the breath seat car <sighs> so it's the uh, the ribs get more involved perhaps um, 
Uh, uh, I'll, I'll answer your question in a moment, Anne. And then um, when we created that space, let's see, when we put weight through the feet, um, instead of the instead of it sort of dropping down and collapsing against the hip, um, we can we can get support up from our touch through the hip. So so it's a different experience because we've allowed the spaciousness between our thigh bone and us, which is the definition of the hip. And and again, it's the use of the foot um, that supports through this freer joint so that giving weight is not a heaviness at the hip. Uh, the result is the hip is more functional. You know? it, it is more able to um, turn internally, externally as you move. <laughs> okay, Helen, um, how to fix Tai Chi belly syndrome. Uh, do Tai Chi differently. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a Tai Chi expert, but um, let's see. Just, uh, we've got a moment. Let's get some energy going. Uh -huh. So uh, Tai Chi belly goes with ideas, I think, of you have to bend the knees and carry the weight, and most people end up carrying the weight with the knees. And then uh, the idea of uh, relaxing the belly, uh, which is uh, so you can f have energy in there. Um, the belly relaxes fine, but if your knees are carrying the weight, then the belly relaxing means that the back takes the weight. Okay, so if you can um, take all the way, the, you know, the knees are bent so that you're not holding yourself up with your back, that's the idea, but it, you should feel supported through the knees, and if you're supported through the knees, then you're supported through the core. So um, the relaxation of the belly isn't a hanging of the belly, forwards off the spine. The relaxation of the belly means that the release of the breath in the diaphragm, perhaps as the heels go down, the upward release of the diaphragm um, takes the weight out of the belly as opposed to makes it hang down. Is that making sense? So you get the, the Tai Chi stance isn't a heaviness in the knees, it's a, it's a springiness in the knees and a, um, it's not a heaviness in the belly, it's a centering perhaps behind the belly as you as you hold the energy i guess same with the arms you know you don't want to reach out because that makes it heavy on the back you want to you want to hold the energy within you you know yeah. so that nothing has to hang off the spine <laughs> uh, yeah okay um I think that's time, isn't it? Yes, it's t uh, 10 to according to that clock. Let me just check the time up here. Um, whoops. Yes. Um, yes, so that, that's time. Um, I hope that was useful. If, if it was of um, any value at all, please do share it around Facebook. Um, I'm coming up to Edinburgh uh, this weekend to do um, the Aquaviva course, um, but um, on Friday, I'll be at Santosha, uh, the, the, uh, the lovely studio in uh, Albert Street in Edinburgh. If you would like to uh, come to the joint clinic, it's 2 till 5 p.m. Um, bring anything you like. Uh, you can book in on the website, the Aquaviva website. And then the following weekend, um, the 28th, 29th, um, we're, we're coming up again. It'll be myself and Abigail. Um, I'm doing... Um, uh, we're doing an open workshop on Saturday with me leading, and then um, on Sunday, Abigail's doing a, a, a workshop for women on pelvic health, and I will be available for one-to-ones in the treatment rooms. Uh, you can book for any of these things on the website, or um, you need to email me to book a one-to-one. -one. Okay, so um, great. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, that'll do. I'm Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga, signing off. I hope that was useful, and I will see you next week. Do, do press the share button below. Thank you. Bye now.